crosses of a ball. And then on the right, France car, we always know he's very unpredictable, very fast, and sometimes his final ball lets him down. But those two are going to be very important for a service to Brian Dean. Well, as for Manchester United, uh, a word about Brian Robson. He's injured again, a back-related complaint, I gather. Uh, no Eric Cantona, he's away with the French squad. When you lose a Frenchman, what do you do? Well, if you're Alex Ferguson, you bring in a Ukrainian. Andrei Kanchelskis wears the number seven shirt in an otherwise unchanged side. So do you think, Trevor, that means that Ryan Giggs plays up the middle uh, with Hughes? Yes, I'm sure he will. And uh, I think it's a positive attacking selection by Alex Ferguson bringing in Kanchelskis rather than Mike Phelan. I think you know, Alan mentioned Paul Lintz, who's had an excellent season, but alongside him there, number nine, Brian McClare, seems to have rediscovered his form since going to that central midfield position. He'll be running from deep, trying to get beyond the front two, and uh, because he did get that equaliser last week up at Old Trafford, so we'll see how he goes as well. Well, I don't think I've been in a ground this season when there's been so much noise. No, it's terrific, a lot of expectancy, I think, particularly the home supporters. Let's see if they can upset the form book. The referee this afternoon, Mike Reed of Birmingham, who's got to keep some order on what's bound to be quite an emotional occasion. Sheffield United are in red and white stripes. And away they go. Number eight there is uh, Charlie Hartfield. There are a few players in this uh, Blades team that people in other parts of the country may not know so well but they'll know most of them on the Manchester United side here's McClare Hughes is down the middle and so is Giggs and that's Mitch Ward Ince here's Giggs Hughes in the centre waiting it was an awkward ball to deal with in the first minute for the defender and he's hurt That's a strange one. That I can only assume it's fallen awkwardly because uh, he didn't see him any under undue pressure. Is it? Is it Beasley? Beasley, I think number six, isn't it, Trevor? I, I think he dipped in for the header, didn't he, from uh, trying to clear the cross from Ryan Giggs as Hughes was standing behind him. Yes, it's his fall that's done it. I think he's hit the post. Paul Beasley. Uh, 27 uh, central defender who equalized here against Burnley virtually in the last minute in the third round to keep them in the cup and he's taken a right old crack there in the first attack the physio here Derek French is quite a character and he's done a bit of good work there because he's back on his feet and it's a corner to Manchester United Pallister's up on the near post Hodges got the ball away, back in again by Sharp, offside flag is up on this side. Another member of the England party there, and obviously the uh, fitness of the England players being monitored all the time. But uh, the Sheffield United physio there, Derek French, did a rattling good job on Beasley because he looked uh, in a lot of pain from that collision. Carr. That's Franz Carr out on the right wing, who you'll remember from his Forest days. He's on loan here from Newcastle until the end of the season. Chance the other end, wasn't it, for Manchester, though? As very crossing coming in uh, out wide that time Giggs drove it across and I think it was just the pace of the cross that caught in town this is Giggs and that's absolutely brilliant and Ryan Giggs confirms his ever-growing reputation on the half hour Manchester United make the breakthrough in this FA Cup tie and it's a goal which will be shown over and over again as the 19-year-old picks his spot on the run and fires a beautiful left-foot shot beyond Alan Kelly. McClare got the ball forward, but look how quickly Giggs found the space away from Beasley, and what a finish. Terrific finish. I mean, having seen his cross wasted, what, a minute before that, he decides to take it in his own hands uh, on his left foot.
You fancied it looked dangerous once it's set up to be hit. No chance really for Alan Kelly. Well, the Manchester United fans have reason to celebrate. And this is one of the most promising young players perhaps to be seen in this country for a long time. And he's with a club where the fans don't need much to trigger them off. Well, to stay in the cup now, Dave Bassett's team have got to become the first to score against Manchester United in the competition this season. And he's seen his side go behind to a fine goal. Free kick to Sheffield United, they've really packed the penalty area here. Hoyland goes in, and it's an equaliser! It's Hoyland! Jamie Hoyland! They're level! 34 minutes! And what on earth happened here in the Manchester United defence? Hoyland's first effort, well, it bounced back onto him really from Schmeichel Trevor. Well, it's a great free kick, but it's Schmeichel's ball, isn't it? Look, it's coming in, in bounces. Well, I mean, it would almost have gone in his arms if it had come out a couple of yards without touching the floor. Hoyland just took his eye off the ball, but Jamie Hoyland will be credited to the goal. The only choker for me is that I had him in the sweep, so he's a goal too late. Well, he's not too late to send the Blade supporters wild here. It's 1-1, and Dave Bassett's team were only behind for four minutes. their supporters who take, look at that free kick, that's Hodges' speciality, that's the ball with his left foot that Hodges delivers as well as anybody in the league, and it's brought the goal for Hoyland and taken this cup tie to a crescendo, Kanchelskis, sharp peeling away on the far side. Ward to Carr, Gale's in the penalty area this time. That's Bryson, and there was Gale, not far away from it. Back in again by Hoyland. Gale gets up again. Hodges is there! Oh, it's 2-1! And Glyn Hodges scores the second goal for Sheffield United in the 41st minute. And Manchester United look at each other and just don't know what's happened back there. Lofted up for Brian Gale to head it on, really, and look at the delicate of the lob by Hodges. This man's left foot is magic. Well, the last person you want it to drop to is Glenn Hodges on his left foot. Could have tried to blast it and panic, but he kept his composure, just dicked it over Schmeichel, who had no chance. So, from one goal down on half an hour, Sheffield United are 2-1 up ten minutes later. What on earth is going to happen in the four minutes before half-time? Bryson, he's away, and Carr's in the middle. Can he find Franz Carr? And Irwin's desperate. It's Carr, and he should have made it 3-1. Actually, it's a corner. Somebody got a touch. It might have been the keeper, but Parker and Irwin were all over the place. I haven't seen the Manchester United defence in this sort of fix all season, Trevor. Well, Chris Kiyomi's pace troubled them uh, a couple of weeks ago at Portman Road. Uh, Suddenly today, just having conceded the goal, they're at sixes and sevens again. And France Carr, of course, a lot of pace. I think he might have been a bit frustrated he didn't turn that one into the net. Hoyland, Gale and Bryson are on the line. And McClare blocks off Hoyland. Corner again. Well, I wouldn't put it past them to go 3-1 here. But now they're swapping over. Gale's left the line and Dean has gone in there. on and, and it's loose again and over the bar from Tommy Cowan possibly a free kick in there but Cowan was the player who had the shot now as that ball was played up for the second goal Brian Gale's presence in there between two defenders caused the confusion but Hodges that was precision Mitch Ward for Sheffield United that'll do I don't think there's anything you can say about that.